throws terminology, it's super, super critical. It's often overlooked. A lot of times you dive into videos, you watch somebody talking about something, including me, and you go, what is he talking about? And in this video, we're gonna take a clip from our recent virtual camp where we have a long video on throws terminology, but we clipped out about four minutes for you guys to check it out. Some really fundamentals that are gonna be critical for you to understand so you get better faster. So check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson and we are back. We're about to dive into all of our pre-training and that is gonna be talking about terminology. Now, the very first thing that we like to talk about is we're gonna be communicating direction. And a lot of times we say, okay, we're gonna talk about three o'clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock. So because we are now living in the digital age, when I say something like three o'clock, what you're gonna see is most kids think three, zero, zero. Jesus Christ. And what we are going to actually be referring to is the analog clock. So we're going to look at our old school clock. 12 o'clock is the beginning of the throw. Six o'clock is directly the dead center of the sector. Therefore, this is three o'clock and this is nine o'clock. We tend to like the clock analogy because I can keep the clock consistent, whether it's a left-handed thrower or right-handed thrower, because I'll tell a lefty to turn their, you know, if they're coming out of the back of the ring, we'll, we'll turn to three o'clock or the right-handed thrower, we turn to nine o'clock, that kind of thing. So the clock is going to be real simple. So when you hear me refer to 12, six, nine, three, eight, whatever, that's the clock we're referring to. Now let's dive into terms. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to start with separation. Separation is the one term that's really the key. Separation, if you do, we do this slingshot analogy or a bow and arrow, we pull that back. That's that stretch and we let it go and that energy. And that's what we're doing in separation. So it's simply separation refers to the shoulder and the hips separating. Notice my hips are going to stay forward here at six o'clock and my shoulders right now are trying to turn over here to nine o'clock without my hips moving. And then in the discus, so if I was in the shot, I'd be separated. In the discus, we have two types of separation, shoulders, hips, arm, shoulder. So you're going to notice how my arm kind of disappears. And a good way to illustrate that is when I show you with the use of a band. So you're going to see when I separate, right? And then I separate again. And if I was throwing the shot, I would see separation and that would be pretty much it because I don't have double separation in the shot. Separation is going to be something we do at two places in the ring. We do it at the start of the throw and then as we throw we get separation here in the power position. We're going to talk about that too in case you don't know. So the next term stretch reflex and stretch reflex is when I separate and you see my body kind of sling back. So basically what that means is it's the longest point of when a muscle stretches and it reflexively contracts and that's a very fast motion. So one of the examples we like to do when we're teaching people is push your hand against your chest like this and then just push hard down, pick up your finger and how fast can you snap your finger down? Okay, so now push down again, push against your hand, peel your finger up and snap it. That's stretch reflex and we're trying to teach you how to move to create stretch reflex in your body. So the next term we're going to be discussing is the radius. The radius refers to the length of the implement or especially in the discus, how far is your arm, right? The big radius. You got to have a big radius. You want the arm as far away from possible. So the distance from my hand to my thigh is shorter. The distance from my hand to my thigh is longer. The longer the radius, the further you throw. So that's going to be important. Now the radius ties into what we refer to as the orbit. And the orbit is where the path of the discus is moving. You see how it's kind of moving across. So this is what we would refer to the high point. As we would come around the throw, the discus would kind of come down. And then as we turn, it hits this is the high point of the throw but notice the orbit so we're going to have high low high and then out around and delivery so that angle and so when that orbit gets off and or the orbit gets off and affects the radius these are negative things and these are basic terms we will again as we start talking and we talk through the pillars and this the six pillars of the throwing chain reaction we're going to be referring to separation stretch reflex radius orbit these sorts of things and sometimes people are like what is exactly does he mean and that's why we're making this video